Awesome. So I guess the uh, preview into Minions of Service continues slightly uh, with my presentation here. Um, so here we go. Just a little bit of context. So Minions of Service at, at a very high level is a uh, cloud application that manages a fleet of appliances. And these appliances uh, run an instance of Minion. And the idea is that it makes, um, you know, setting up a minion quite easy. So you won't have to go into like the craft shell and things like that that you saw in the uh, earlier presentation. <laughs> so um, my project is uh, broken up into four pieces. Um, so the first thing, oh, I just had a bit more context. Um, the appliance that um, I'm working with here right now is the Raspberry Pi 4. So more or less what I'm doing, the first part is adding a temperature and humidity sensor to it. Um, I've also added an LCD screen. Um, also after that uh, is the ability to retrieve some the snap update history from the device because our IT device runs uh, Ubuntu core. And then last but not least, um, in order to configure uh, the appliance um, uh, with the like sorry with the network configuration, like the IP address, uh, mask, you know route and things like that. Um, there's like this existing NetPlan uh, utility, so I've kind of replaced that um, with a Go program. I'll kind of go into that in a little bit more. Can someone, sorry, I'm just looking at the a comment there uh, in the chat. Okay, I'll just continue. Um, anyway, so first up, uh, regarding the temperature and humidity sensor, I selected the uh, BME280. Uh, as the temperature and humidity sensor, and then it hooks up to the I squared C bus on the Pi. Um, that behind the scenes, we're using Pi4j, um, that library, and uh, below that, the uh, the actual libraries and interact the system. The C libraries are named Wiring Pi. Uh, so a little bit of a little bit of challenge there was that I had to use version 1.4 of that, which is in development. So just because it's uh, actually not compatible with ARM64. Uh, the only available version is 1.2, and that's only compatible with ARM 32-bit. I borrowed some code from the Control Everything IT community to uh, actually interpret the data that's coming out of the device and turn it into something that's recognizable as a uh, temperature and humidity uh, reading. Um, I put that into the existing SNAP, which uh, this OpenNMS Dominion is more or less the manager of Dominion um, that sits on the appliance. And um, with the data that we get from the sensor, we ship it off to the cloud. So I'm just gonna go quickly show, let's see if I can do this really quick here. I'm going to show a different uh, camera here. I guess I have to stop presenting and share a camera. Okay, so present. Um, hold on a sec, turn on camera. I'm actually not seeing a preview on my end. Hmm. Okay, no, I am actually here, just so small, I couldn't see it. All right, so this little gadget here is the uh, BME280 uh, temperature um, and humidity sensor. So it's quite small, just a little bit smaller than a penny. And um, as it, and it's sitting on one of the I squared C buses over here. So that's more or less all I was going to show for that. And then I was going to show my screen next. Um, do, 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 do. Bring it back over here. And with that, we'll just refresh this. Refresh. And this is a temperature reading, or this is the readings we've been getting from the device for the last little while. So let's see if we can get to, yeah, so this value here in orange is the humidity reading. So we've been hovering here in the office around 50 some percent humidity. Uh, above here, oops, where's the temperature? Here's temperature reading. So we're currently sitting around 23 degrees. Um, so that's more or less it. We have it all here in the cloud. Uh, and there's a bunch of other values. I was kind of just showing this while well. there's the existing, uh, you know, CPU um, usage values and uh, the CPU temperature is here as well. So it's available as another device statistic. Go back here. So for the next part 
is the LCD screen. Um, so that is a 16 by 2 LCD screen, model 1602A, also an I squared C um, device, and all the work from the previous, um, you know, getting the temperature sensor uh, working applies here as well. Uh, except that this is just going to display a few little things for the user, like uh, in the case of you know putting in um, a static IP address, or if you're just curious about the address you got via DHCP, it will display that, and it'll also display the you know connection to the cloud, um, as well as whether the minion running on the appliance is you know actually working or not. So then it can go for the big reveal because my camera is still showing. I'll just move Ulf out of the way here, and we can kind of see here. Um, I guess it's slightly out of focus, but you can see that it's toggling between uh, two different screens. So one is, um, you know, the interface name along with the IP address, and uh, then we have the cloud connection, whether it's true or false, if you're connected, and uh, whether the minion running on the appliance is running or not. So that's more or less it for the LCD screen here. Uh, okay. Next up is the snap update history. So this is kind of um, adding to um, existing functionality where we can you know, update the, the snaps or the software packages on the device. So one thing we don't do right now is um, tell the user when their updates have happened historically or you know, in the recent, uh, recent times. So I will just quickly show that here on this REST client. So unfortunately, I'm not a UI developer, so <laughs> I don't have, uh, didn't you know, mock up anything for there. I just implemented the uh, RPC request on the device itself and, um, you know, the connection to the cloud. So I'm running a, an instance of the Minion as a Service backend on my laptop here. So that's why I'm targeting a local host. And from here, I'll just send a request. And the response I'll get is just, you know, what's happened recently on it in terms of updates. So we can see that we've last, I'm not, I'm not sure if the text is large enough for everyone here to read, but we can see that the uh, latest event that, have, that has occurred update-wise is updating the kernel snap. A refresh has taken place. And we can kind of see when it took place as well and when it was finished. And yeah, we see it's uh, complete here with the status of done. So you know, as more and more events are, are added, this will just keep growing. This list will, will definitely grow over time. So that was that little other mini project. And for the last bit, let's go back to where my slides go. They were here a second ago. Did I minimize it or something? Anyway, like a, it's not that important because um, I didn't really have anything to show for because there's just work in progress. Uh, so the existing way that we, um, we deal with uh, setting up a static network configuration on the appliance um, is you know via USB key, and we have a, um, a net plan configuration file there. So uh, more or less, as soon as you uh, put the key on the, or sorry, yeah, place the key in your Raspberry Pi, it will use polling to determine if um, the configuration file exists at a certain mount point. And if it finds it, then it will uh, you know apply it and reboot the system. Uh, so instead of having to poll for you know that location and to see if that file exists. We wanted to replace that with um, a more event-driven approach instead of polling. So uh, there is a Go program I've been working on, uh, which works off of UDEV, which uh, exposes you know various things related to devices in Linux. So I look specifically for um, you know USB devices that are essentially storing memory, so block USB devices. And as soon as those pop up, they would get mounted. That file would get read, assuming it's just sitting there in a root of the file system, and then it would be applied and rebooted. So it's a whole lot uh, you know, nicer than just constantly polling. So I don't really have a demo for that because it is still in progress. And um, yeah, that's it for me. That's what I've been working on this week. Awesome, thank you, Pierre. Uh, LCD screen looks pretty neat. <laughs> Thanks.